you deserve the credit for just being in tune with the culture enough that you could tell that there was something that there was a different attitude or energy coming down the pipe in terms of rap music you know that this there was going to be a lot of aggression coming out that we maybe hadn't seen through like even the er earlier in the 2000s you know there's a lot of weird rap happening but it wasn't there was there wasn't screaming it yet. wasn't they wasn't hey they wasn't showing their emotions about it and if they was it was like all downtrodden and fucking uh druggy and shit because when you have odd future and asap who are sort of like painting this picture of like this fun young lifestyle right you kind of need the angry element there, yeah, and, and yeah. if you've been watching the culture long enough you always can see that happening that like you can only have disco for so long before yeah. you have like punk before energy they, they, they gotta to balance counteract each other it, out you know yeah, they got you to know. they gotta balance each other out and you know and that's and that's why it happened again when you come with like people like uh uh, six nine came in. He came in right on that edge, or you had, right. you know, or you had to balance. Like I feel like, you know, rest in peace, X. You know, X was, and I told him that, like, yo, you are exactly what I was meant to be. Mm -hmm. And the fact of you're combining those worlds of you have you have this melodic embrace of of the dark parts of the world that happens, and then you are able to free those same people in the same album, sometimes in the same song. That was the crazy shit about him was that he was able to do it both. Because when you, when you look at hip-hop right now, it's like you have very much the sort of like rougher, angrier shit that is popular, and then you have like a lot of shit that's just much more melodic that really almost doesn't have anything to do with rap mm -hmm. at this point. Those are like the two sides of it, and he sort of personified that. Yeah. In, in and, I, and I told him that. I told him that to his face, and I'm happy I was able to do that at, uh, at LA Live. I was like, yo, bro, you know, that's really... And he asked me that. He asked me about that, too. He was just like, he was like, bro, how does... How do you get through it? Like he's like, bro, knowing that. Cause he, he told me he's like, bro, I know. That's what he's like. I know. He's like, well, how do you do that shit, bro? How do you get through it? Like, how do you get through knowing like like this was supposed to be yours? Mm. And he said it. He didn't even say it, like real arrogant, you know. Like he said it in a way like he just turned around like, and you seen like you know it was a fucking massive packed out sold out crowd. And he was like, this was supposed to be yours. Wow. Like, how do you how do you deal with that, bro? Like that shit would drive me crazy. And if you ever talked to Ace, you know he like he was he was real. Ooh, about when he said shit. You but know did what you saying? take offense to it? No, nah, fuck no. Like, I kind of knew what he was saying. Right. I was like, well, I mean, as long as somebody like you happened, then it was all worth it. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's what I told him. That was my response to it. You know, like, as long as somebody like you happened, bro, it was all worth it. And I remember I still got the video on my phone. He did that song, uh, the suicide back, suicide back, right. fuck my life up. Right after that, he did, he like, ran up to the top, to the second uh, level of the shit. It was like hanging off of the rails, like he was trying to jump off. He did that right after that. And it was like, in that moment, like, you know, I felt vindicated just from the fact of him existing. That's why, I mean, I remember him and him dying was so crazy to me because it was like, you know, after all of that, after all of that, after the, everything get realized, then they just like take his flame out like that. Right. You know? That's crazy. Yeah. Like, it, but it, when I think about him, I always just think about like, was. Like he was just such a volatile person. The energy around his whole career was so crazy that it. And when I think about that first tour he went on, and how fucking insane that tour was, and how every day there was a different story about some crazy shit, yeah. and it just makes me wonder: like, is somebody whose flame burns that bright? Like, it, it just doesn't. It almost feels appropriate that it didn't burn for that long. It, it, like, like somebody threw nitrous and gasoline on it, right? You know, it's like in some way. Isn't it, there's a little bit of a silver lining to the fact that we don't know what a 50 year old Kurt Cobain is like? Yeah, no. That it only we only got to see this. I mean, short at, period the, at the same time, though, you you can't. I mean, I feel like I look at it like this. You know, if 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 X was Kurt, do I get to be Ozzy? Because <laughs> you got the Lord of Darkness. You know, still Ozzy. You see Ozzy. Ozzy is still Ozzy mm. to right now. And I mean, Ozzy them did. I mean, they. You want to talk about fucking rock star? Right. They rock star, you know what I'm saying? But it never it never got to him. And I always think about that too, dude. I mean, X's flame was fucking massive. Do I go ahead and accept my flame growing bit by bit every year? Every, right. You know, for whatever do I let my legend. Because my legend now, it builds for every Every year, you know, more and more kids realize what I was able to bring to the game or how I was able to change things. Even though there's a whole bunch of people just like, what did he do? What did he do? Those dudes are just a fucking... Dumbasses. But don't do you really feel like shit. you're ever going to be able to really capitalize on that? Because I don't, I don't, at a certain point, it's like a lot of the biggest names from that early era. At the end of the day, it's not like they're really doing numbers. I'm not sure. Even the biggest names, it's like kind of hard to imagine them selling out big shows and shit yeah. like that. I mean, hip hop traditionally just has a very, very short memory. I I feel like hip hop does, but 
that's the thing about it. I, I once again, I'm a rock star, mm. and I feel like it's up to me and my actual fans or the people that say they support me, you know, or those people who say they're my friends. Because that's another thing I learned. You know, I had a lot of uh, friends. Mm. Know, in, in the industry, and, and 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 they think I don't know if they think I give a fuck about them now, but I don't. I just realize what kind of pieces of shit they are. You know, like you you trying to let this holding on to this bit of fame and and ignoring a phone call is how you hold on to it. You know, that's that's your grasp at it. Like, oh yeah, I'm I'm still too big to answer this call. Right. You know, like that. That's all you got. I mean, what kind of what the fuck are you really doing? And I always wonder why people do that. You know, if you got so many guys who feel like they was left behind on this rampart, right? Why don't we all come together and put shit out, right? right. And if we push it out, enough of us all push it out together, right? When we get some kind of a claim for it, if your base was this and my base was that, why not work together? But you look at these fucking mega dickheads and everybody complains separately without working together. Uh -huh. And then they say, oh, no one loves us. I mean, really, I mean, you never know who loves you because you're too busy trying to dick ride or get to Future and get to uh, uh, Kendrick and all the people at the tippity top top instead of working with your fellow man who's, like, right there next to you. And I think that more so holds all of us back than, you know, the, the oh, would you ever be able to live up to those expectations you have of being a legend? Mm. I feel like the, all the legends got to be legends together. That's how the legend, you're only a legend because the overall story is told, right? So who would be on the, like, Legends of SoundCloud rap tour that we're proposing here? Um, I mean, if, if you ask me, I mean, you I mean, you got to. And, and Dex is still right here in the middle of, of, of the kids now. Dex? Dex, definitely. Dex, very influential, yeah. But, I mean, he's sort of someone who just felt like they were just making the same song over and over, and it just sort of people, that they lost interest. Dex did a lot of things to his career on his own. He's Too many those, features, too. He's one of those people who I can honestly say I don't feel like anybody fucked over their career, but... He him. sold... Didn't he sell his SoundCloud to some random person, like, very early on? I think so, I'm but pretty I'm not sure, sure that's a real thing. You know, um, um, also, I mean, also when you come into it, though, you got to think about it like this, too. Even, even if it's... You see how hard it is to even remember some of these people? Like, mm. we, we, like well, I'm sitting here now, like, trying to rack my brain, like, okay, who's there? Because you got people that pop in and pop out, like OT Genesis, right? He kind of pop in and But it's interesting in because out. he does a good job of still staying relevant in the industry and stuff. He's still at Rolling Loud. He wasn't booked Period. at Rolling Loud, but he's backstage at Rolling but Loud, cooling with everybody, Kicking you know? It. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I'm saying. Like, I think a lot of, a lot of people are able to drop in and drop out. And that's a blessing. I, I'm I'm more of a, a hermit. Like whenever I decide to come out, it's always love. Because but, that option is always there for you to be one of these guys who's backstage or rolling loud, kicking it with everybody, taking photos with everybody, sort of, bit, right. you know, nurturing relationships, basically just clout munching. Everybody does right. it. It's a weird thing. Right. I feel weird it's when I'm so in that weird. environment it's because so everybody's weird. doing it to me. Right. It's so weird. And I'm doing it a like little bit to other people too. Of, people like us who are more, you know. We in life, like I said, man. Every time me and you see each other, it's just some in life shit. We're know? just old enough to have perspective on what you know. A lot of people who are like twenty, twenty one, and shit. It's like they're if they could be backstage or rolling loud, just talking to motherfuckers and networking and shit. That's they're they so do. excited. Yeah, that is so thrilling. Yeah. <laughs> You get to a certain point where it's like, okay, but how how does this affect my shit business wise? How does this affect my career? That's all I think about, you know, yeah. like is this affecting my business? Is this going to drive my business up anywhere? And I, and I think maybe we trap ourselves a little bit by doing mm -hmm. that. You know? But do you feel also with like the the eye situation originally, and then the flesh eating bacteria that it's like sort of it forced your hand, it forced you into being a bit forced, of a hermit. I was forced in a way, and especially and then me going over to Europe and China so much too. Mm. You know, and while everybody else was doing tours and shit over here, I was over in Europe. I was over in China. I was over just because. There were bags to get there. That's because it was bags, bags in China, bags in Japan. Bag. I mean, I've been all, I've been to every fucking country you can imagine at this point. Right. And I, and and honest to God, I mean, who who's upset about that? You right. Know what I'm saying. So, I I, I have friends and. So man, I got friends all over the world, man. I could, I could probably spend a good twenty minutes just shouting out people around the world, and I think that's a blessing too. But you're right, it forced my hand a lot, you know, mm. because people during those times when things happened, I wasn't able to come and mesh with the kids over here. You right. Know? Or when that whole switch happened from being people like around my age mm. to 
the kids like pumping them. Like you remember us being in the studio right. with pumping all them, but I wasn't gonna stay in the studio with pumping all them. I didn't understand what the fuck <sighs> they jokes and shit was when him and G Nils and all them was around. Like I didn't get all that shit. You know, Nar used to be around selling with the fucking boards and right. t shirts and shit. Like it just wasn't an environment that was conducive to me. Well, you know? it's, and it's like that, you know, they're a couple generations after you. So it's yeah. like they're sort of doing all this shit. Like, I, I remember Pump being in Hollywood, drinking lean for the first, not like the first time, but, but it's like very early times, in his yeah. career where drinking lean and being in Hollywood with Was a rental yeah. seems like this shit. Yeah. Pump already is not rolling around getting in trouble like that you know he knows yeah. he needs to stay in the crib and if he's gonna be yeah. I, I don't even know he said he stopped drinking lean i haven't actually seen him drink lean in a yeah. while but i well, see that's him what i'm saying you i'm looking I'm at his story looking at his eyes like all are right. you are still, yeah you still know. looks all right it looks a little sober yeah, yeah. you know how, how's your actually pause i have to piss like so bad that i, just, <laughs> I never do this but i gotta piss so bad all right. how we looking we got a good interview right now I said I wasn't going to do no interviews. I got one more left. I said I ain't going to do no more interviews this year. Yeah, I, I don't know when the last time I did an interview either. I feel like it's just a waste of time most of the time. They're just asking the same shit. How was it? Man, I have been waiting on this shit for a while, though. We were yeah. supposed to do this shit forever, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. You always, always kept bringing it up. Man, I think we need something cool. We were supposed to do this shit forever ago, bro. That's what he said. The notes was like, 2016. Like, we were supposed right. to do this shit forever ago, bro. We was like, we was always fucking off. We're like, yo, bro, we were going to do that interview. Did we see, I remember we seen each other at Wayne's birthday last time we talked about it. We was at Wayne's birthday. Oh, it was really? like, damn, bro, we were supposed to do that interview, bro. We still ain't did that shit. We going to do right. that shit? Oh yeah, bro. If you ever if you ever at the rocks, bro, all you gotta do is say my name, bro. I'll take care of you. That's my spot. Ugh, all right, piss break done. Um, okay. What's your personal drug use like these days? Like, how hard do you party? Uh, I stopped smoking weed. What? Um, I barely drink at all. What? Even when you're at the bar? Even when I'm at the bar. What are you I, drinking in there? Sprite? Um, no, I'll get one gin and juice. Okay. Still got to keep it player, but okay. just one. Right. Only one. Um, the only thing I actually do take is my pain medicine. That's about it. Really? And I mean, I, I, I'm kind of forced to take it. Yeah. I have no choice. Would you prefer not to? Yeah. At this point in my life? Yeah. Fuck yeah. Because right. it's been a year straight. I went... I went 26 years without ever taking a, any pain medicine whatsoever. And then going from that to being forced to take pain medicine every day, all day. Right. Shit sucks. Sucks. And people, you know, that's why I tell my friends who get high on the same shit. I, you know, I take the, to function. You know, even through this whole interview now, I'm like, I'm, just, I'm, I'm in pain like fuck. Right. But I refuse, and it's been through my entire career, I refuse. I've never done a show high or drunk. I've never done an interview fucked up. And so I refused to do this one that same way. I was like, I'm not going to take my pain medicine before Really? I do this interview. I'm not going to be here, like, glossed out, trying to fight a knot or some shit. Yeah, you know? when you are on your pain meds, is, is there a certain element of that where you just sort of feel like you're just sort of... Yeah, 100%, you know? And that's why I try, and, like, when I'm doing that type of shit, I try to do one or two things. I try to be in the studio or make sure I'm at home. Right. You know? Because I don't never want to be in a situation where I'm known for, like, oh, yeah, Mako's nodding out so and so situation and people not understanding like yo like this man's a lot of fucking pain right you know what i'm saying like pain you can't even imagine so it's like i never want to i never want people to misconstrue my shit and i've never been one to try and glorify the drug use as much now i'm gonna talk about it in my rap songs and shit because let's be real about it when we rapping we're not just talking about our current life we talking about a lot of times we make things happen in the past when things happen in the present with things that's happening in the future, you know, that's and that's how we do it. But listening you know? to your new album, it seems like your brain goes to drugs a lot when it's music making time. Well, yeah, because I've been on drugs a lot when it's music making time. I just told you, you know, when right. I'm, try, I'm trying to make sure, like, if I'm on drugs, I'm in the studio. Okay. But I want to use it for something. So you the lean, the lean and shit that makes a reappearance when you're in the studio. Do you feel like that's I the appropriate only drink time? Lean 
Only, only, only if I feel like I'm going to be sick. Mm. And that's it. And really? Only, yeah. I, That'll I'm stop not, you from getting sick. I'm going to be honest. I've never really thought about leaning from like a medical perspective. Well, I mean, it's closer. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, if you have any excuse to drink a cup of lean, just think about it. I mean, now them fucking junkies, bro, it's 90 a lot. You ever notice that you'll like never see the Migos drink a lean on Instagram and shit? Yeah. I don't think that means that they're not drinking lean, but it's it's interesting to not see what rappers that, clean up their image. Yeah, but, publicly. I mean, but look at where they are now. Yeah. Biggest group in the fucking world. Do you really want to be the opioid group? Probably a lot of brands probably don't want to see don't them with see pints. That. That's don't what I would assume the motivation might be. You can do whatever the fuck you want to do, and the camera's off, but I yeah. want to see you with the pints. And people who don't really know what's going on, to them, like, they'll see you with a double cup, meh, whatever. They see you with a fucking bottle of medicine, and this, they start to get freaked out. They start yeah. to really realize what's going on. What's going on. Yeah. It's weird, But right? no, I, I'm, 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 I mean, in the last in the last nine months, I probably drank lean two times. Mm. Um, Same. Yeah. Probably. So I mean I don't I don't I don't partake in anything else. I, I gave up all drugs, um, more so just because I didn't want to have any other complications from anything else that was going on. And I mean being high on shit when you're in an enormous amount of pain isn't the best thing mm. in here, you know. Like, right. Nojumper.com. Like, comment, subscribe. If you guys enjoyed this video, you want one of these, you know where to go. And then no jump with Facebook too. Link is down in the description. Some good stuff going on over there. Appreciate y'all watching this.